and welcome to Enrich Academy. This is Nancy. Today we're going to discuss about the basics of stock market. Stock market is an investment tool. There are two kinds of analysis to understand stock market in a simple way. There is the fundamental and the technical. The fundamental deals with the basics of stock market, whereas the technical is the advanced level which you need to gain knowledge of after you have fairly understood the basics. The first thing to know in stock market is world market timing and index. Now why do we need to know world market timing? Let me explain with the help of an example. Imagine a trader sells his stocks as soon as the market opens because the market is negative. But he does not check the trend in the world market. Now imagine Friday is a holiday in Indian market. When the market opens on Monday, this trader sells his stocks quickly thinking the market is in the negative trend. Unfortunately, he does not know that the US market is $5 high on Monday. He does not bother to check the fluctuation in US on Friday and sells his stocks in the Indian market. Remember, the festival holiday is only for India, not for US. This is why it's important to track the world market timings. Stock exchange is like a supermarket. How they bring in the stocks of vegetables and fruits, likewise, the company owners list out their shares in the exchange. Now, India has two major stock exchanges, BSE and NSE. BSE is Bombay Stock Exchange and NSE is National Stock Exchange. Bombay Stock Exchange started in 1875 and it's the oldest exchange in India. And NSE started in 1992 and they started trading from 1994. NSE is the world's largest derivative exchange. So what happens in the back end is one type of trading mechanism. And you may think that the fluctuations in prices are automated or someone fixes the prices of these products. Both of this isn't true. It's purely based on the buyers and the sellers. Now there's something called the order book. An order book matches the best offers and the best bidders and gives them the priority and trade begins with that price. Now let's look at the two kinds of market, primary market and secondary market. Before a company is listed in the exchange, the transaction that occurs between the company and the investor is called a primary market. Whereas secondary market is the next stage of buying and selling which occurs after the initial transaction between the company and the investor. Here trading takes place between different investors and the stock brokers are the mediators in this process. IPO. IPO means initial public offer. Now a company may request for a loan in order to expand that company. Bank loans are given with the help of securities but only for certain limits. They do not give loans predicting the future, right? So this company solicits the public for investment to expand the company. So like RBI is the head for banks, SEBI is in charge of stock markets. SEBI offers public issue based on the financial statement of that company. So based on the company's credibility, awareness and liquidity, investors invest in that company. The shares of this company get listed in the exchange, after which you can start trading with the help of a broker's platform. Now, you may not be a trader or an investor, but when you buy a share from a company, you become a shareholder of that company. Owning stock means owning a piece of a company. Remember, these funds can grow faster than cash in your savings account. As a co-owner, you are entitled to a share of the profits and assets of that company. So what is an equity share? If the company gets profit, what is the profit to an equity shareholder? From the company's profit, the shareholder gets bonus or dividend. When the company grows, the price per share increases, which eventually leads to a rise in your net worth. But if the company incurs a loss, their stock price also falls and your net worth will also go down. Remember, every product has a byproduct. Likewise, equity has two byproducts, futures and options. For instance, you have 1 lakh shareholdings. Now, futures and options are tools to lower your risks in the future. Why do you need to lower your risk? 
In case there's a crisis situation in the market and the market crashes or goes negative, then the FNO option can help in this situation through hedging. So what is hedging? In simple terms, hedging is similar to insurance as we take an insurance cover to protect ourselves from one or the other loss. Now futures are like a wholesale market. We can only buy the product in bulk. We cannot buy a couple of products like the retail market. The exchange brings a contract along with an expiry date. We can either buy or sell or sell and buy. Contract cannot be owned by us. It can only be held till its expiry date. And the lot sizes are defined in futures. For instance, one lot may contain 500 shares or 1000 shares. Now the lot size may differ from stock to stock. Now imagine the price of a share in equity is 180 rupees. If you purchase 3000 shares, you can only buy those shares by paying 5,40,000 in a single payment. That is 180 multiplied by 3000. If you predict that the market may go up in future, instead of making a single payment in equity, you may buy in futures. In futures, you just need to pay 25 to 40 percent span margin. All you need to do is to maintain the span margin on a daily basis. Whenever you want, you can exit the market with profit or loss. Futures are unlimited profit and unlimited loss. Let's look at option. Options is a hedging instrument. For instance, I pay an insurance premium of 20,000 for a car that costs me 10 lakhs. Likewise, in equity, you have to pay a premium of 5,000 to 10,000 for the 1 lakh shares you have in hand. So how can we insure? There's a strike price for every share in the market. For every strike price, there is a call option and a put option. If the market is in uptrend, you choose call option. And if it is in downtrend, you can choose put option. As far as options is concerned, it is unlimited profit with minimum risk. Now, what is P-E ratio? P-E ratio means profit earning ratio. Let's check how to find out P-E ratio. Let's imagine there are two cows in the market. Both have the same price, one lakh each. But one cow gives us four liters milk while the other gives eight liters milk. So which cow will you buy? You will surely buy the cow that gives you good returns, right? Likewise, the investment that you make in a company must give you good returns. So choose wisely and buy shares of a company that will give you good returns. You can find out the returns of a company with the help of P-E ratio. P-E ratio is the value that you get when you divide the current market price of the company you choose divided by earning per share. So P-E is equal to current market price divided by EPS. Now all these values are available in NSE website and also in Enrich Market Hunt. Now book value is similar to P-E ratio. It's a tool to know more about the company credentials. Book value is equal to company's total asset minus total liability. You should validate a company's total asset and then buy the shares. So how can we validate a company? In order to validate a company, a company's market capital, asset, debit, cash flow, technical analysis, competitor company, and so on must be taken into account. There are basically two major trends in the market. If the market is in uptrend, we call it bull market, and if the market is in downtrend, we call it bear market. In a bull market, there is less unemployment, excess fund in the market, and it's expected to sustain for at least 9 to 12 years. While in a bear market, there is a shortage of funds, unemployment may go on for at least 1 to 3 years. Now, you may think that bear market is a difficult time period. But that's not how it is in the market. Both bear and bull are good for the market. Based on the bear market, shares can be purchased at a low price. Now in this scenario, you will be able to buy many shares. When the market turns into bull market, you can sell these shares and earn a good profit. For instance, let's take Reliance. Instead of just looking at the fact that it's a good brand and a good company, you must analyze the company's balance sheet and buy their shares. If you look at the statistics, in 2008, the trade price was 2200 for Reliance Capital. At present, the share price is just 4 rupees. 
For the last 10 years, the company balance sheet has been negative. So it's very important to frequently check the balance sheet of the company before you buy their shares. Now these are some informative websites. You can check Enrich website for more information and all the basics of the market. Make sure to read market news regularly and research information about the market trends. We will be uploading the various trends in the market on a regular basis. To know more about stock market, share, like and subscribe our YouTube channel. This is Nancy signing off from Enrich Financial Group. Thank you.